My monologue's not so serious. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have a question for all of you. Now, I want you to be very honest with me. How many of you have ever attended a vagina workshop? Really? No one. Okay, well, if you ever do, it could start a little something like this. Your vagina is a shell, a pink tender shell, opening and closing, closing and opening. Your vagina is a flower, an eccentric tulip, the center acute, deep, the scent delicate, the petals, petals gentle but sturdy. That's what I learned from the vagina workshop. And I learned it from the woman who runs the vagina workshop. She's interesting to say the least. She is a woman who really believes in vaginas, who really sees vaginas. And she helps other women see their own vaginas by seeing other women's vaginas. In the first session, we were asked to draw a picture of our own unique, beautiful, fabulous vaginas. Yes, that's what she called it. She wanted to know what our own unique, beautiful, fabulous vaginas looked like to us. One woman who was pregnant drew a big red mouth with coins spilling out. <laughs> Another rather skinny woman drew a kind of serving platter with a Devonshire pattern on it. I drew a big black dot with little squiggly lines around it. See, the black dot was equal to the black hole in space, and the squiggly lines were just meant to be people, or things, or just your basic atoms that got lost there. See, I had always thought of my vagina as an atomical vacuum, randomly sucking up particles and objects from the surrounding environment. <laughs> I recommend you all keep your distance. <laughs> then, the woman who ran the workshop asked, asked us to take out these hand mirrors. And then we were to verbally report back to the group what we saw, or in my case, found. <laughs> and I must admit, up until this point, everything I knew about my vagina was based on hearsay or invention. I had never really seen it. I mean, why would I? It's between my legs, it's hard to look at, but more importantly, why would I look? And it was really awkward looking at it like we were in the workshop. <laughs> <laughs> it reminded me of how primitive, how early astronomers must have felt with their primitive telescopes. <laughs> and I found it kind of gross at first. It reminded me of how, it reminded me of the first time I saw a fish cut open for the first time. All bloody and complex, right under the skin. And it was so raw, so red, so fresh. And the thing that surprised me most was all the layers. Layers, inside layers, opening onto more layers. I found it kind of amazing, my vagina. I was speechless when it came my turn to talk in the workshop. I had awoken to what the woman who ran the workshop called vaginal wonder. <laughs> Basically, I just wanted to lie there all day with my legs spread looking at my vagina. <laughs> I mean, it's better than the Grand Canyon, ancient and full of grace. My vagina has all the innocence and freshness of a proper English garden. And it was funny, very funny. It can hide and seek, open and close. <laughs> then the woman asked how many women had had an orgasm. Two women, two, tentatively raised their hands. I did not. But I have had orgasms. I didn't raise my hand because they're accidental orgasms. They happen to me. They happen in my dreams. It's the best way to wake up in the morning. 
They happen a lot in water, mostly in the bath. Has anyone else noticed we only have showers here? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes on horses, bicycles, a few times on the treadmill at the gym. I didn't raise my hand because although I have had orgasms, I don't know how to make one happen. It's a, like a mystical, magical thing. I don't want to get involved. It would be wrong, contrived, manipulative. All the mystery would be gone. You know, sort of like if you were to go backstage at Hollywood, and then you'd see how the film was made, and all the tricks. It would take some of the excitement away from seeing the actual film. The problem is, I hadn't exactly been to the movies in two years. <laughs> And I like going to the movies! <laughs> Don't we all? <sighs> then, the moment arrived that I had both dreaded and longed for. The woman asked us to take out our hand mirrors again and see if we could locate our clitoris. We were there, the group of us women, on our backs, on our mats, searching for our spot, our reason, our lotus, And I don't really know why, but I started crying. <laughs> it was probably just sheer embarrassment. Or maybe it was knowing that I had to give up the fantasy, the enormous, life-consuming fantasy that someone or something was going to do this for me, that someone was going to come into my life to lead, to choose direction, to give me orgasms. I started panicking, freaking out there in the workshop. The simultaneous terror and realization that I had avoided finding my clitoris, had rationalized it as mainstream and consumeristic because I was, in fact, terrified that I did not have a clitoris. Terrified that I was one of those constitutionally incompatible, frigid, dead, dry, shut up, shut down, apricot tasting, bitter, I hate apricots. <laughs> I lay there, searching with my mirror, reaching with my fingers, and all I could think about was the time when I was 10, when I lost my gold ring with the emeralds on it in the lake, how I kept diving over and over and over again, running my hands over fish and rocks and bottle caps and slimy things, but never my ring. The woman who ran the workshop saw my insane scrambling, sweating, and heavy breathing. So she came over and I told her, It's gone! It's gone! I've lost my glitters! I should not have worn it swimming! <laughs> she laughed too. She calmly stroked my forehead and she told me my glitters was not something I could lose. It was me, she said. The essence of me. I didn't have to find it, I had to be it. Be it. Be my clitoris. Be my clitoris. I laid back and I put the mirror down. I closed my eyes and I watched myself float above myself. I watched as I slowly began to approach and re-enter and I felt like an astronaut re-entering the surface of the earth. The whole world got quiet, and I became very calm and at peace with myself. And then, I slid into my vagina, and it was suddenly easy, and I fit. I was all warm and young, and pulsing and ready and alive. And then, Without looking, with my eyes still closed, I put my finger on what had suddenly become me. I got a little excited. And then this quake, an eruption of life and love and passion rushed through my body. 
and the quake opened onto an ancient horizon of light and silence, which opened onto a plane of music and innocence and color and longing, and I felt connection, calling connections I lie there thrashing about on my little blue map. My vagina is a shell, a tulip, and a destiny. I am coming as I am beginning to leave. My vagina. My vagina. Me.